So let's go, uh, before we adjourn here, let's go and do like a couple of softer topics, more, more rapid fire. So as we talk about, as we talk about integrating family in here, we know like, Hey, we have to be able to do our jobs and then go back to our families. How, how do each of you make sure that you can maintain a work-life balance and make sure that you don't get burnt out at the end of that day when we come home and then we face a whole other bevy of challenges. So this would make my wife laugh, but actually working out is one of the things that helps me. I get, I go to a gym in the mornings. Uh, usually I'm there at six 15 in the morning and do a workout that helps relieve some stress from me. I love to read and I love to listen to audiobooks. So I constantly tell the team when I'm in front of them, what I'm reading and what I'm listening to at that moment and just try to talk to them about that's one it's enhancing for me it gives me diverse thought and viewpoints uh to think about and so uh those are things that help me relax and shamelessly i have gotten on to a uh classic car restoration kick where i'm finding myself watching a tv station that plays these continuously um so those things help relieve some of my stress and and i try as much as i can not to take a lot of work home with me all right, sir. So if you could restore any classic car, what would it be? So I was currently looking at a 66 Chevelle SS. Um, I would really love to have something like that. And I'm also a big fan of like the early Land Cruisers. Um, so those are the two I actually have saved on my phone right now that I'm like looking at. Um, but I love old cars. I grew up, my dad always restored old cars. So my first car was a 66 Pontiac Le Mans that my dad restored. And then before he passed away, he and I were working on a 62 GMC pickup. Um, but once he passed away, he was the brains of the operation. I was just the, go get this screwdriver, hold the light here. Um, so when he passed away, I ended up selling it to a friend of his. Um, but I would love to do something like that and, and get back to it. get a nice LS engine in it, make it really go. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's, how, how do you find that work-life balance, Sergeant Major? I try to maximize when I'm at home that I'm at home. I don't. Um, the pool and the hot tub. The pool, the hot tub. Uh, and I'm, I, I have a, a wood shop, so I do a lot of woodworking, uh, mainly in the bad weather. What do you specialize in with your woodworking? I don't really specialize. I made everything from from a grandfather clock to a farm table to trophy stuffies, you know, for awards for best warrior competitions, um, all kind of stuff, whatever. Done a little bit of carving, just try to a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, I don't do a lot of other stuff, but just, yeah, we're around the house. And so I think it's really important when you're, you know, if you're in a, in a senior position where, you're, where you're, your activity at work's pretty high and it could be stressful, that, that you're, I, I'm pretty good at shutting that off. So, and somewhere along about 33, I kind of shut that down. And I said about what I'm going to do when I get home and then we'll verse next morning when I'm heading back down the other direction in traffic, started to think about what I need to do when I get to work. And so I guess out of my era, I don't get too whoop high or low on anything. I'm trying to keep the even keel and serve me well. What do you do, Chief? Well, um, you know, before this job, uh, the job I had prior to it was the deputy G6 position, which was pretty busy. And so there's a lot of times, you know, you get calls in the middle of the night because stuff wasn't working or things like that. So it was hard to do that. And by getting this job, my, my wife, who I've been married to for 20 plus years, um, told me that I was like a whole different person because I do have the ability to have a little bit more for better work-life balance. So I like to wrench on things, you know, I like to work on cars, but mine's out of necessity, not because of a collect, collects his car like he does. I've got a, my pickup truck that uh, I've been working on uh, for a long time now, it seems. But my cars are older, but I've been able to keep them running, so I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, but I have a ton of hobbies, and, you know, I like to spend a lot of time with my grandkids. I got two, uh, two boys, one's four and one's two. And then I hang out with my son and my daughter doing barbecue. You know, we like to do barbecue. And uh, I just got a ton of hobbies. I like garden. I do word working occasionally. Um, but... I got plenty of things to keep you busy. So, all right. And then we go to a lot of public facing events as an Ohio Army National Guard. And sometimes at these events, we get some, some famous people like some former Buckeyes or 
you know, very influential people that come. Of all of these events that you guys have been to in your illustrious careers, what is the number one person or the your favorite encounter with a favorite person in in your role within the guard that it's allowed you to be able to meet these people, interact with these people? Are there any that come to mind? Yeah, I've actually got two. And one's famous, one's not famous, but um so because of my role, I get to go out and do a lot of broadcast interviews and TV, radio type stuff. Uh, so Chris Merritt, who's like the director of the Ohio Association of Broadcasters, is one of the most phenomenal people I've ever been around. She's always energized, excited, and just a great person. And she makes every one of those opportunities extremely exciting. Um, but probably celebrity-wise, uh, last year I spoke at the Ohio High School Coaches Association, and I was introduced by Ryan Day. So we got to shake hands. I gave him a coin. And then sitting behind me was Chip Kelly, who put his hand on my shoulder uh, and told me I gave a good speech. So I would say two pretty prominent Buckeyes right now in the coaching staff that, that were pretty impactful in the events that I've done. I, I think a little bit different direction. Um, you know, I, 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 stand, I got we made a few celebrity types along the way, but you know, my, my disposition and my turf or my, my formal position and allow me to be in some rooms that I never thought I'd be in, you know, so, um, you know, where we have the state partnership program and, and then we have some of these high level meetings, but I just would fill with the bag and then you'd be with, um, you know, with a prime minister or, or with an ambassador or you have to have another dinner at the ambassador's house. And, but that, that's, that's pretty cool. But I think, I think my favorite encounter was, um, I was at a uh, was at a at a NATO conference um, in, in Hungary, and we had a just a, a, a social event one evening, a cookout, and I found myself at a bigger table with the uh, senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the SEAC, the, the highest level RCO in in the service, and two um, very senior NATO, um, one German and one English um, NCO, and just. The, the the conversation was fascinating. Sometimes I'm a little starstruck being in this position, sitting in a room with with some folks like this, and get just get act on a, a peer to peer level. I would say um, there's a, a lot of people that I've I'm I, I'm impressed by. You know, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, was it the Veterans Hall of Fame. Um, there's a ton of people there that were in, uh, inducted into the Veterans Hall of Fame um, that Cheryl Ashinghurst actually it was her event as she put on. And um, it makes you, it kind of humbles you because these people are doing more stuff in their after military service than like 10 times more than I do on a day to day basis. So it kind of makes me feel like a slacker. But we also got to meet um, a Sergeant Major who was a Medal of Honor recipient at the memorial this year. And talk about him, impressive. The older guy, uh, super humble. I was asking him, like, man, uh, how did you get the courage to do something like that? And he goes, honestly, he goes, I don't even remember half of them. And I was like, that's awesome, you know, that a guy like that could do those things. And probably the rest of his life, you know, didn't dwell on it, just went on with his life. Isn't that something? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. It was just awesome to meet the guy. So um, I really enjoyed that part. Yeah, so... So this is an awesome way for us to be able to reach out and say, like, there's so many fringe benefits to what we do and into serving. And for me, having served and, and to be a part of it, that's been a huge thing for me is is to be able to you never know who you're going to run into. You never know who you're going to meet. And the perspectives that you get from them is, is just only going to enlighten everything else that you touch. So it's it's great to see how, how each of you have experienced that. So we'll just do one last parting shot from each of you. If there's something that you would like to say out to the echelons, to the families, what, what's one final thought that, that each of you want to, uh, to say to the folks? I'll start with you, Chief. Um, I would just say that, um, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, uh, it was a great idea to do this. Uh, I think it was, who's, whose idea was it? You guys, oh, Sergeant Major Workland, Sergeant Major. <laughs> just I appreciate. I I just appreciate the opportunity to to serve in this organization as long as I have. I've met a lot of people, a lot of awesome people, 
Um, I've been able to, to talk to people about being a warrant, which is super rewarding and see them come up through, you know, uh, the ranks is, is awesome as well. Um, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to, like I said, sir. And, you know, I, I never thought I'd pursue this position. You know, I like to be a nerd, um, and do nerd stuff. And, you know, certain major workly in general Woodruff, they love it. I mean, every time I talk about it, <laughs> more <laughs> it, it's our lifeblood. I can't get enough. <laughs> and it might look like they're sleeping, but I know it's just meditation and concentrating on what I'm telling me. <laughs> so, um, at the end of the day, you know, I think that, uh, being in the guard is a very worthwhile pursuit. Um, I can't think of a better purpose really than defending our state, our homeland, you know, we'll fight, fighting where necessary for the nation, for everybody's freedom. Um, I just, I think it's a worthwhile pursuit. Yeah. Thank you, chief. So our major parting shots. I, I just want to tell her, you know, tell the, tell the 10,000 plus soldiers out there that I'm really proud of, of everything they do every day. And I really want them to be proud of their service and embrace their legacy. Um, understand the legacy of this organization. Uh, cause it, you know, it's, it's, it's done a lot for a long time. And, and you're part of that. You're part of the less than 1% that, that wear the uniform in this, in, in this country. And, um, and it's, it's actually some of their products. General Woodruff. So one, I would echo that, that, you know, we get the opportunity in these jobs to travel all over the country and all over the world, visiting our great soldiers. And I can tell you everywhere we go, we're amazed at the talent we have in our organization. The commitment that the soldiers have, especially the traditional that are balancing family, civilian job and the military, and they're still doing amazing things with great attitudes. Um, I just want to emphasize, you know, when I pick the motto, people first, winning matters, I truly am committed to people first and encouraging each and every soldier in our organization to strive to be their best. And if we embrace that, that everything we do is about someone else our G1 shop, our G4, or G3 shops are focused on making things better for the subordinate organizations. And at the brigade, battalion, company, troop, and battery, if that's our focus, then every single one of our soldiers are going to thrive. <laughs>